only more me I am blessed Oh, I am blessed with a lovely daddy I am blessed And I am blessed with brothers and sisters I am blessed I don't deserve it, but yes, I am blessed Not here today to sing or dance, but rather by the grace of God to preach the word of God. The word of God is the word of life. Hallelujah. Some trust in their chariots and in their weapons, but I put my trust in the Lord God. And those that put their trust in God shall never be put to shame. When there is a casting down, you shall be saying, There's a lifting up. Praise the Lord Jesus. No matter the traps, set against you by evil men or unfriendly friends no matter what they have been saying or doing against you i tell you they shall not prosper i see you breaking forth from every side in jesus mighty name amen i count it a great privilege to be used by god to convey this message to all of us to him alone be all the glory a very big thanks to my sweet, lovely, and hardworking dad, who prepared me as a vessel of honor unto God. Dad, you will go places. You have labored much, just like Peter in the Bible. You have toyed both in the rain and the sunshine, in the deep and on the surface. The Lord will remember you. You shall not be put to shame. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I commit this my lips of clay to you this moment. Let your rivers of living water flow from my mouth and water every soul that is hearing me. Let there be positive changes in our life in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody say, Amen. My topic today is rumor. R-U-M-O-U-R. Rumor. What is rumor? Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary defines rumor as a piece of information or a story that people talk about but that may not be true. I repeat, a piece of information or a story that people talk about but that may not be true. The people spreading the rumor are called the rumor mongers. Gossip 
and backbiting are in the same neighborhood with rumor. Many have entered into serious problems by it. Some have died because of it. Proverbs 13 verse 3 You must be careful about the information you receive because they will form you or they will deform you. Information are so powerful, both the good ones and the bad ones. Also mind the kind of company you keep because bad communication, as we all know, corrupts good manner. First Corinthians 15 verse 33 We must also be careful about what we say to our fellow people because we must give account of every word we say. Let us stop killing people with our mouth. James 4 verse 11 We must guide our mouth properly. James chapter 1 verse 26. Hallelujah. Even when something bad or tragic befalls someone, how do you feel? Are you happy going about spreading it with joy? Let us remember what happened in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 1 from verse 1 to 17. You can read it on your private time. You will see how a man killed himself because of what he said. He went and told David about the death of Saul because he knew about the conflict between two of them and even claimed he was the one who killed Saul, thinking that David would be happy and may promote him for that. But instead he met his death. Let us be careful on what we say. Am I communicating? If you're happy, clap for Jesus. He's worthy. <laughs> Praise God. I want to say this. Sometimes rumor is good. If you are nobody, nobody will rumor about you or gossip about you. Until you become an issue of discussion, you are not yet successful. One of the proofs of your progress is when people begin to rumor about you. Sometimes they even gossip that you are dead. Reverend Dr. Omar Obai said, If you have not grown to be gossiped or rumored about, then you have not grown. There is a level you will reach in blessings. You will become an issue of discussion. Whether the blessings come from God or elsewhere. In the eastern part of our country, Nigeria, there is a popular proverb that says, when a child fetches more firewood than his mates, they will say he has gone extra mile to the evil forest. Some people hardly believe that something good could come as ordinary or from God. They generally believe that every remarkable success either comes from demonic means or through devious way. But my Bible assures me that every good and perfect gift comes from God. James chapter 1 verse 17. Praise Jesus. Some people are funny when you are down. I mean when you are poor. They pretend to be sympathizing with you. They even promise you that they will be praying for you. But as soon as God remembers you and things begins to change positively and your profile begins to rise and they notice you are now a celebrity. At this point, their true color begins to unveil. They will develop hatred against you and your success. And because there is nothing they can do about it, the next thing is to metamorphose to gossip, envy, jealousy, backbiting against you and blow up a rumor. This set of people, no matter how good, simple, humble, or helpful you are to them, they will never talk good of you or appreciate you and they will still refer and address you as the same former poor person they used to know. These people are everywhere. They are in the markets, villages, schools, homes and they are even in the church. No wonder Jesus lamented and said, a prophet is without honor in his own land. Hallelujah. Mm. But blessed be God. There are so many good people both here and out there. 
who are vision helpers. They will encourage you, appreciate you, support you, correct and even rebuke you when necessary. They will stand behind you, both in season and out of season, to see to it that you are moving forward. They are happy when you are progressing and if there is any challenge you encounter, they will never give sleep to their eyes. They intercede for you in prayers until you to prevail. This is a kind of heart we need to possess. This is God's kind of heart. Am I understood? Thank God. But one may ask, what can I do if I'm being gossiped or rumored against over what I'm sure I did not do? My answer is nothing. I mean nothing. The moment you start fighting back, you start losing. You reduce yourself to their level. You are angry because of the ones you had. What of many others you did not hear, which might be worse than the ones you had? John Martin said, protest long enough that you are right. You will be wrong. As long as your ways are right before God, you have no apology to anyone. And never you attempt to fight back, either by words or otherwise. Just leave it to God. For the Bible says, all things work together. Good to them that love God. Hallelujah. Romans 8, verse 28. Praise Jesus. May I also say this once more. Sometimes rumor is good. Rumor mongers are advertisers that do not receive any pay. They are your number one media. They help people to know more about you without they themselves knowing what they are doing, thinking they are blocking your way. Oh, my mom has just come in. She was on a special assignment somewhere. I love you, mom, and I thank God for you. Remain blessed in Jesus' name. No one has succeeded without having this bitter experience. I started receiving mine since 2005, as little as I was that time. Suddenly there arose a very ugly rumor that I rejoice it was is dead, and it was news everywhere. As a little girl, there was nothing I could do about it than to cry. I was not sick, I did not have any accident of any kind, then how come about this rumor? I was weeping. How can they say that I'm dead while I'm alive and in perfect health? But my caring dad, man of all season, stood behind me and he comforted me and he made me to know that this rumor has just come to make me know that I'm somebody and he shows that the whole world knows about us, the destined kids. Calls we are coming from everywhere, both within and outside Nigeria. Some called me on phone and asked, Rejoice, is it true that you are dead? <laughs> I will laugh and reply them humorously. So you are speaking with a ghost if actually I'm dead. <laughs> it is funny. Like I said, Grimomongas are advertisers in disguise. As they were busy with their rumor, we were busy doing our own thing. So we let her release Joy 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 Volume 4 the next year. And do you know that under one week of release, 400,000 copies we have sold to God be the glory. People watch it like pure water just to know if what they had was true. But thank Lord Jesus, they saw me with my siblings praising God as usual and they were happy glorifying the name of God. But rumor mongers were nowhere to be found because they were shut up in shame. To God be the glory. However, they have refused to go to sleep. They have released another version of rumor. This time, they say that I rejoice in where is pregnant. <laughs> Maybe I have become another Virgin Mary who became pregnant without knowing a man. This is funny. <laughs> God.
great musician Bongos Ikwe asked in his song, Show me a virgin in a maternity world. Maybe I'll be number one. <laughs> but I love the way my dad puts it when he was being asked. He said, if my daughter is pregnant, it is pregnancy of greatness and fortune. But this time around, I was not bothered. I did not even think about it for one bit. Because I'm no longer new in the rumor market. <laughs> it has also helped our latest album, Joy 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 Volume 7, to make wave in the market. A whole lot of people are buying it just to see if it is true. And thank God, they have seen it is a big lie and they know that it is the work of the enemies. That is one benefit of rumor. Even though it pains, but it pays. A man out of joy was telling his neighbor that his wife has put to bed. These evil men, the rumor mongers, were passing by. They heard, but they did not hear well. Their evil mind did not allow them to get the man right. They went and spread that the wife of Susa and So has been put to death. They were happy saying, who knows what she did. The progress and success of others is causing them headache. Why? Do you know, in December 2008, we were invited for a program at Enugu by the Executive Governor of Enugu State, His Excellency, Dr. Sullivan Chime, Executive Boss with government officials and armed mobile policemen we are sent to pick us for the program. While we are still on our way, my dad began to receive calls that they had that we had been arrested by policemen. There are so many busybody in the land. I wonder the kind of joy they derive in gossip and rumor. James 1 verse 19 says, Be swift to hear, but be slow to speak. Hallelujah. Now, let us see the causes of rumor. The major causes of rumor are envy, jealousy, hatred, and bitterness of hearts. If you can keep your mind away from all this I have mentioned, you will be free indeed. Proverbs 4, verse 23-24 if there is no envy, no jealousy, hatred or bitterness of heart in you, when you hear bad news about somebody, the first thing you will do is to contact the person, verify and ask him one on one and actually what happened. You might be surprised, the person might not even know what you are talking about. We must allow the love of God to saturate our hearts. Am I communicating? Of course I am. In my solo album titled, Such is Life, I sang I am not for sale, that my body belongs to Lord Jesus. These evil men, who know that I'm far beyond their reach, out of bitterness of heart, they were provoked and they began to rumor that I'm pregnant. The grace of God upon my life is giving them headache and sleepless nights. But I thank God, I am not living in a hidden place. I have not missed class or lesson for once. I have not even taken a sick leave for one hour from my school. Why then all this rubbish? Please hear me and hear me good. I rejoice in Weze. I am not for sale. My family and I are slaves to Jesus. Daddy Bishop Paul and Watuku said, in every level you arrive in life, there is always a devil waiting for you there. As you are going higher, so you will meet in more dangerous ones. And among them are demons of gossip and rumor. You must be prepared and equip yourself very well. Your shock observer must be strong to carry you on. But if you are not ready to meet them, that is, if you are not ready for people's gossip, 
critic, hatred, and rumor, you better forget about success and celebrity because it is buy and buy issue. It must come. But here is the good news I have for you. Faithful is he that called you. He will never let you down. His grace is sufficient for you and I. Praise God. No one has ever made it in life without being attached with gossip and rumor. Remember, it is only those at the forefront or on top that every eye sees. And as people of sound mind and good will are appreciating you and thanking God for his grace upon your life. These evil men of bitter heart will be searching for a spot on your back and eventually, if there is none, they will fabricate one and label it on you and also spread it just to make sure you don't go far. But one thing is sure. When God blesses, he has blessed and there is nothing evil men can do about it. Numbers 23, verse 20. Tell yourself, I am going higher. Say, I will never be a rumor monger. But I will be a reporter of good news. God bless you. My dad told me about a legend called Archbishop Benson Idahosa of blessed memory. He was a celebrated preacher he had no respect or compromise for poverty, sin, and Satan. He was highly and richly blessed by God, both in ministry and in life. He was a high flyer, an epitome of God's goodness, confirmed by devil and men. But however, he had his own test of this bitter experience when his adversaries could not stand the heat of his God's given blessing, they cooked and spread a rumor that he was a cooking pusher just to tarnish his image and ministry. But instead of going down, his ministries exploded and worked stronger like never before because God was with him. Who the hell are you to lay your hands on God's elect? Beware. Even our Lord and our Master Jesus, who left his throne in heaven and came to this world to redeem mankind, was maligned with gossips and rumor. There was nothing he did that this evil man appreciated. He fed the multitude twice, he opened the blind eyes, he cleansed the lepers, he healed the deaf and dumb. He even raised the dead. He did so many miracles, but in all this, oh my God, this man of bitter heart could not appreciate any of them. They began to gossip and rumor, saying he is not from God, that his powers are demonic. Matthew 12, verse 24. Therefore, as a child of God, when you hear things against you, do not be angry, but rather rejoice. Leave everything to God. He is there for you. Matthew 5, verse 11 to 12. In conclusion, have you been criticized, gossiped against, hated and rumored against? Don't worry. Keep focused on what you are doing. Don't revenge. Always remember that Satan is bringing all this just to discourage you. But never mind them. Always rejoice in the Lord. Don't bother to complain or to reply them. Forgive and forget. Never you hear them back. John Martin said, Those who hate you don't win unless you hear them. And then you destroy yourself. Sticks and stones are only thrown at a fruit bearing tree. Rumors and rumor mongers help you to checkmate yourself. Hebrew 12, verse 1. 
they help you to keep on the right track because you wouldn't like to put them right it is even more dangerous when everyone is speaking good of you it might be a trap for you not to know when you are drilling look chapter 6 verse 22 to 23 and 26 therefore count it a great joy be happy when you hear gossip and rumor about your name or what you did not do it is a sign and a proof that you have become someone finally you that have ministry of criticism backbiting gossip envy jealousy and rumor when will you be tired why not make a change over god loves you and he is waiting for you he has better plan for you you are too big to be a gossip or a rumor monger you are an eagle why must you die like a chicken be an encourager a promoter motivator and a vision helper not a vision killer please learn to appreciate people and good works do not make yourself feel free dictating who is wrong and who is right remember we're free do not win trophies but be kind to people and by so doing in all this time time god will establish you and he will give you the desires of your heart in jesus mighty name amen i'm done hallelujah opportunity given to me to share the word of truth God is good and he will do you good as you hear and do his word it is time for us to pray father I thank you for you are ever faithful I am weak but you are strong your word says by strength shall no one prevail therefore I surrender totally myself to you Use me like never before to convey your word to everyone seated here and let your word bring healing to all of us in Jesus' healing name. Amen. I was just called upon to talk on this subject that says the right of a child. I have a limited time, so I'll be brief. The right of a child. Many things have been said about the subject, too many ideas and complications. But before I go on, let's see who is a child. Oxford Advanced Learner's Definition of a Child is a young human being who is not yet an adult. Secondly, 
a person who is strongly influenced by the ideas and attitude of a particular time or person. Then, what is right? From the same dictionary, it defines right as a moral or legal claim to have or to get something or to behave in a particular way. From this definition on a child, we can say a child does not know his left or right. He totally depends on his parents for guidance. Whichever way you see a thing, that is how he will see it. And any name you call a thing, he calls it the same. He speaks and understands the same language you speak. He has faith and trust on his parents. He asks too many questions and whatever answers you give to him, you believe strongly without doubt. That was why a man, after greeting someone, he tried asking, Dad, what is the name of that man? He replied and said, don't mind that man, he's an idiot. So a day came as the child was going to school. He saw the man and with smile and excitement, he ran towards the man to greet him. Do you know what the child said? He said, idiot, good morning sir. He thought the real name of the man was idiot based on what the dad answered him the other day. That's a child for you. He has no skeleton in his cupboard. No wonder Jesus said, except you are like a child, you will not see the, the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. As we saw from the definition of rights, a legal claim of what belongs to you, it is possible for one not to know what belongs to him out of ignorance. It is also possible for one out of lack of proper information and, and ignorance to begin to fight and claim for that which does not belong to him. We need to be well informed on what is our right. Then, what is the right of a child? From who and where is he expecting it? The answer is simple. First, from the parents and guidance. Secondly, from the government. Thirdly, from the public. But first, Let's start from the parents and guidance, for they say, charity begins at home. Hello, hope I'm communicating. Praise God. Let's take our test from the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 6. Proverbs 22, verse 6, and it says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. In our journey here on earth, there is always a training period. Doctors, preachers, teachers, engineers, lawyers, and every other professionals, they all had their training one time or the other. Proverbs 15, verse 22. So it is for a child. Every child deserves a first-class attention and home training from his parents or guardians. It is not going to be one of those things. Rather, it is a must and a duty. Many parents have abandoned their children in the hands of mates, nannies and nurses. I am not saying they are bad. They are good, but it remains much because nobody will do it the way you would have done it. In the book of Exodus, Chapter 2, from verse 7 to 10. The mother and the elder sister of Moses, Miriam, knew this very well. When the need of who is to take care of little Moses arose from Pharaoh's daughter, quickly, Miriam, the elder sister of Moses, recommended their mother. But unknown to Pharaoh's daughter, it was Moses' mother. We all know what happened, how Moses was nurtured and trained in the fear of God, he was given the useful and rightful information he needed even in a strange land. We saw how he was used by God to do great work and mighty work because he was carefully nurtured, trained and well informed by his mother. Amen. Samuel was another person 
who benefited from this godly home training, both from his parents and Eli the high priest. And he was specially and mightily used by God. First Samuel chapter 3 and chapter 4. Another person was Lemuel in the book of Proverbs chapter 31 from 1 to end. We notice that it was his mother that laid the foundation of his prophetic ministry. His mother trained him in the fear of God and gave him warnings about alcohol. She also taught him the benefit and importance of marrying a good and godly woman. In the Bible, Timothy was among those who were trained by both his mother and granny. There were many others who benefited from this home training and it made them stars and celebrities. Not only that, they brought honor to their parents. As parents, when you give a child his rights, you will end up being honored and celebrated. Some parents have dumped their children in schools to enable them go about their businesses. Well, it is good, but I believe it is not the best. I know the money you are pursuing about is for the upbringing of those children. What if after getting the money and those children are nowhere to be found? That is the bottom line. You need to pause and think about this. School teachers will not give God account of your children. It is you and you alone. God's school teachers owe to their pupils and students are academical excellence to help them academically. But to you, our parents, you owe us firm allegiance for good and moral upbringing to teach and train us in the fear of God. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10. Sit down with your children, morning or night, on both. Interact with them. Ask them questions and let them ask you. Allow them to express their feelings. It will help you to know the areas you will work on each of them the more. Because every one of them is unique in nature. Teach them how to pray. Don't assume they know. Make them know the importance of reading the Bible and encourage them to read. Teach them how to talk and behave both at home and outside. Teach them to hate evil and encourage them to love and do good. Teach them to have respect for people and have fear of God. Most importantly, pray for them and help them discover their destiny on time. All these and more are our legitimate rights as a child. Please, don't blame teachers in the misbehavior of your child at home or school. Teachers will not remove the characters of your child. They may help at a certain level if you permit them. Yes, I use the word permit because some parents will not take it light with you if you dare rebuke or touch their children. But if you permit them, they can help at certain level. But yet, it is your God's giving responsibility. Don't shy away from it. Hope I am understood. Thank you, Jesus. Buying food and clothes for us is good. Yes, because we must be fed and clothed. But that's not all. Fixing money for us in the bank and buying shares for us is very good. But that is not all. We must be trained and cultured in a godly way on how to manage them or else we might miss road and misuse them. All these good things on our disposal without proper training might be a trap of death. Good character and the fear of God are the best legacy parents can leave for their children. Hallelujah! Is that okay? You can never exchange your family with your business or work. There is no substitute to each other. You must give your wife, husband, children, business and work each one its own time respectively. Don't ignore or neglect any of them. 
there are some instructions and advice that you are the only one who can give it to your child and there are some personal questions bothering and disturbing him that no other person can give him the correct and sincere answer apart from you but if you fail by not giving him attention that will create the opportunity for him to ask the questions some other shallow and evil-minded person might take it as an advantage and destroy him by giving him wrong and negative answer and he will take it thinking it is the right answer but that will never be your portion in jesus name amen proverbs chapter 29 verse 15 let's open our bible and read amen praise the lord if you are happy shout hallelujah and it says the word and the proof gives wisdom but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame we are africans for christ's sake and above all we are children of god there is nothing wrong in killing a child when he is proverbs 13 verse 24 provided it is done in love i'm not talking about those who offload their anger on their children when someone else provoke them outside at the slightest thing their child would do they would descend on him as if the child is an armed robber that one is demonic if you are caught you will be prosecuted i mean beating and correcting the child in love not with hand please but with cain of his signs let him know the reason why you are rebuking and killing him very important if you don't do that he will misunderstand you and possibly hit you and that will be the worst show him you care show him love and let him see you really love him make him believe and have confidence in you do you understand Remember, he did not beg you to give birth to him. You were the one who consciously brought him into this world. Therefore, you must see to it that he survives by giving him his due rights. It is your God-given divine responsibility to train and guide your child until he comes of age. When you are training your child, you are sowing a seed of honor to yourself which you will reap in due time proverbs chapter 29 verse 17 never you accept this general slogan that people used to say children of the last days don't ever accept it for your children my daddy will always tell us right from day one don't do this don't do that because they are not biblical if you tell him that others are doing it he will tell you that you are not others that you are different and unique though we are in this world but we are not of this world yes it is true in second timothy chapter 3 verse 2 it talks about the last days which is now that many unlawful things will begin to happen including children disobeying their parents but also in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 1 we are reminded and commanded to obey our parents and there are many blessings attached to us when we obey including long life what cause if we fail to obey them that will never be our portion in Jesus name therefore our parents please guide us very well so that we don't enter into crosses but to enjoy God's blessings. I hope we are getting something. Hallelujah. Parents, you must not fold your hands and watch your children misbehaving. Don't over pamper your child. Pet, play, comment, and appreciate him, but also correct, reprove, rebuke, and chastise if the need be. Proverbs 3 verse 11 to 12 also fast and pray for them in your own private time apart 
from God. Children are the hope of every nation. Show me a nation without a child, and I will show you a nation without a future. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, knew this fact. In the book of Exodus, chapter 1, from verse 1 to end, he wanted to wipe the nation of Israel out of envy and greed. He attempted it by giving order to kill every newborn male child. But the almighty God of Israel, the wisest God, brought his mission to zero. Satan, the father of all evil, knows the importance of children. He knows their potential and how useful they are. So he lay hands on the failure of the parents and ignorance of these children and begin to mislead them. That's why in every nation, halotry, crime, and other related evil activities are more among children and youths used and destroyed by the devil. Arise, awake from sleep, oh mom and dad, for night is fast spent and the day has come. You should not fold your hands and watch us die. Give us our rights. Show us the right way to follow. We are still tender. We need your advice and counsel. Proverbs 15 verse 22. Every child is an asset to his parents, not a liability as many thought. Begin to see your child as an asset and begin to give him his full right by giving him good training required as directed by God. You will see he will grow both in favor of God and men. First Samuel chapter 3 verse 26 and Luke 2 verse 52 and you will end up a happy sweet mother and a proud father. Proverbs 23 verse 24 to 25. Hallelujah. But my fellow children, this is my advice. I want us to know very well that our mom and dad and our guardians love us so dearly. That's why they run around morning, afternoon and night, working very hard just to provide all we need. We must not fail them. We must keep to their godly instructions. We must honor them by our good behaviors. We must not embarrass them or put them to shame. We must not cause them to suffer high BP. Let's obey them as unto the Lord. We must do all we can to make them joyful moments and daddies. Let's avoid their curses because God gave them the power to curse and to bless. Genesis 27, from 3 to 4. Genesis 28, verse 1, and also Genesis 49 and verse 4. If you have been disobeying your parents or guidance, please repent and change. Because if they curse you, God will endorse it. And at the same time, if they bless you, God will confirm it. So let us choose to be blessed by obeying them. When we obey, we shall live long here on earth. Ephesians 6 verse 3. Not only that, we shall be blessed all round. That is the promise of God. That is the commandment of God. And that is our right. Hallelujah. I want to tell us a story about a child. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm sorry. My time is up. But till next time, God bless. Hallelujah. Concerning to this message, I'm highly impressed on any issue concerning children. The right of a child is not what we can joke with. We go children, they need to protect their rights, to enforce their rights, even to defend them at all costs. I would say train up a child in the way he will grow. When he becomes old, 
you shall not depart from it. So you will need to be trained very well with the word of God. And they have to be protected by the law of the land when the law or the right is preached one way or the other. The future of our nation lies with the children. So we are going to pay every debt to see that our children are trained very well because there lies the future of the country. Yes, concerning that my daughter, I'm highly impressed because uh, I believe the parents train her very well. That's why she's a shining star. I see a great future in her. I see her as a person that will lead her generation. I appreciate the parents for paying the price of training the child to be what she is now. The future is glorious for the child. A rumor, whenever a person is, is rumor, or there's a rumor against a person, what it means that person is doing well. You don't carry rumor on people who are not doing well. You carry rumor on people who are doing well. So anytime a person is rumored or something is said about negatively, it means the person is, is doing well and people want to do back, uh, backbiting. I have been rumored, they, they, they carry many rumors about me previously. When God's prosperity was seen in my life, people said many other things that I got well through this or through that. They were envious. So rumor is not all that bad. Rumor is telling you that people are appreciating you, but they are doing it negatively. So many things have been said about our, our artists, both young and old. And, uh, you know, this, this act, this rumor, this act has actually gone a long way to even destroy so many souls. And to putting in some kind of uh, bad influence on some people, but those that do not even know about it and all that. But I think this time around, I'm I'm happy about this event, this program by our little sister. Now God is now about to use to expose this deadly act of rumor. And being someone that is also coming from that angle, having been rumored about, you know, negatively on some issues, you know, I think God is going to use this medium to kill this very canker worm. And I believe by God's grace, our industry will, will change for better. Don't know why Jesus loves me. 